Hello everybody, welcome to my next video. This one is on trade versus autarky versus trade with the tariff. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is appropriate for an intermediate microeconomics course with no calculus. And we're gonna be looking at the outcomes in this competitive market with that demand function, that supply function, and a world price of 60. We're gonna compare the results of autarky, free trade, and a tariff. I'm going to be looking for quantities, for any imports or exports, for consumer and producer surplus, and then also in the case of the tariff for tax revenue and dead weight loss. So let me get started real quick. Let's start with looking at our competitive market in autarky. With, let's get some intuition with the graph. That's where I always like to start. We've got a supply curve and we've got a demand curve. So demand curve looks like this. The supply curve looks like that. And I want to find the point where they touch each other and get the quantity and price as well as these choke prices. And once I find all that stuff, I can answer everything I want to know. So I guess I'll start with choke prices. If I set the demand curve QD equals 100 minus P, I want to find the price where Q is zero. So let's see, zero equals 100 minus P. That's a nine, what the heck, P. And then P is equal to 100. So I can fill in 100 on the graph. And I can do the same thing for S, zero for quantity supply, zero equals P over two minus 20. Well, that's P equals 40 there. Got our choke prices. So far, so good. Now, I want to find equilibrium. And that, I just set my two equations equal to each other. I set QD equal to QS. 100 minus P equals P half over or minus 20. That's 120 equals three halves P, which means that P is equal to 80. There's our equilibrium price under autarky. Autarky. Now I substitute that into either function to get our quantity. Also substitute it into the demand function. Q equals 100 minus 80 is 20. There we go. That is all the information I need to get started. One, we're in equilibrium. Our quantity supplied equals our quantity demanded. So there's not gonna be any dead weight loss. There's not gonna be any shortage or surplus. There's not gonna be any trade, nothing. This is autarky. We can do consumer surplus, however. So just a second, let me make some room here. Q for autarky is 20, P for autarky is 80. Let's get some consumer surplus. Consumer surplus is the area, oops, is the area below the demand curve, the inverse demand curve and above the price. So my consumer surplus calculation is gonna be one half times the base of that triangle, it's 20 units across. The height of that triangle, 100 minus 80, is also 20. And it's going to come out to 200. So, let's see, CS is equal to 200. And let's do some producer surplus too real quick. Everything below the price above the supply curve. Let's do producer surplus is equal to 1 half times the base of it's 20. The height of it is 40. It's 80 minus $40 high. This is going to come out to be 400. Producer surplus under autarky is 400. Which then means our total surplus is 600. Okay. There we go. We're done with autarky. Now, what if our world, 
What if we open up trade to the world and we find that the world price is lower than our autarky price? Let's say it's 60. Now I'm interested in, are we importing or exporting? And how much? And what does that do to consumer and producer surplus? I'm gonna erase this graph. I need a bigger one real quick because we're gonna need some space. Obviously, it's not the scale. I don't do that fancy stuff. You can go find a better video if you want to. Alright, so there's our autarky result. But now, autarky is not going to matter because we're looking at what happens with free trade. So we've already calculated everything we need from autarky. Now we introduce a world price of 60. All right, well at 60, I can plug that into the demand curve. 100 to QD equals 100 minus 60 equals 40. Our consumers wanna buy 40 units of the good. And our suppliers, QS is equal to P over two, so that's 60 over two is 30 minus 20 is 10 are only willing to supply 10 units of the good. Now, if this were a price ceiling, because the picture looks very similar at this point, if this were a price ceiling, we would have a shortage of 40 minus 10 of 30 units of the good. However, in this case, we're not talking about a price ceiling. We have the rest of the world we're trading with, and this disparity between how much our quantity demanded is, let's see, Quantity demanded, let's see, demanded, let's say, call that with, with free trade. Let's see, we solved for 40. Quantity supplied with free trade is 10. The price was just 60, that's given to us. Uh, that gap between what our people are buying and what our sellers are selling is actually filled with the rest of the world. And this 30 is how much we are importing. Uh, so we're buying 30 more units of the good than we're selling. That's stuff we have to buy from someone else. And so what does this mean for our consumer and producer surplus? Well, our consumer surplus, just like before, is everything below the demand curve and above the supply and above the price the difference is that now we're buying 40 things and so it's all that space in there that huge triangle we buy 40 things at 60 bucks consumer surplus is equal to one half times 40 times 100 minus 60 which is also 40 is 800 so consumer surplus with free trade is 800. Producer surplus, let's do that next. Everything below the price above the supply curve. Producer surplus is equal to one half times 10. That's the base, 10 units. And the height of that triangle is 20. That's just 100. Producer surplus under free trade is $100. So what's happening? Uh, when we started trading, our sellers now had to compete with a global price, which was lower than the autarky price of 80. And so they had to start selling less goods at lower prices, and they lost their surplus. Uh, it's hard on businesses. Loss of producer surplus obviously sounds very vague, but it could mean people getting laid off from work or having to work less hours or jobs lost and unemployment and all kinds of other fun stuff. Businesses hate imports because it means they're not getting business. Consumers, however, love them. We get to buy more stuff at lower prices than, with, than without trade. Now let's say that 
somehow our producers who have seen their surplus decline as well as their profits what if they convince our politicians to put a tariff on they need some protection from this from this free trade business and so let's say our politicians implement a tariff that has the effect of raising the price let's see price with a tariff equals 70 let's say it's a ten dollar tariff so there's already the world price and then we're going to charge roughly a sixth uh i'm making these numbers up obviously this isn't real uh but what does this tariff do well if we look at this on the graph it does a lot of things one our consumers now have to pay the $60 to the rest of the world plus $10 of taxes. So with the new price we face of 70, we demand less of the good. We're only going to buy 30 units. QD with the tariff is 30. I got that by plugging 70 into the demand function. 100 minus 70 is 30. I can do the same thing with my supply function. Uh, QS is equal to 70 over 2 minus 20. 35 minus 20 is 15. By the way, you might be asking uh, how come the, the suppliers are competing with the 70 price instead of the 60? Well, even though the tariff isn't levied on them, the only reason they were selling for 60 bucks is because that's what the rest of the world was selling for. They know, though, that our consumers are paying 70 bucks to buy something from somewhere else. And so they can increase their price by 70, even though nothing about the supply curve has changed. So instead of selling 10 units at 60 bucks, they're going to sell 15 units at 70 bucks. Uh, and so a few things are going to happen. One, suppliers will gain producer surplus. So there's the new producer surplus, and it gained all of this stuff. Uh, that's all new surplus for our producers. Our consumers, they lose surplus. We're buying less stuff, and we're buying it at 70 bucks instead of 60. And so we lost all of this stuff in here. That was surplus, and now it's not. At least not consumer surplus. So let's do some calculations here. And see what these things add up to. Our consumer surplus is one half times... Oh, I forgot to actually finish calculating those numbers. I'll do consumer surplus first. It's one half times 30. That's how many we're buying. At a price of 70, uh, let's see, that should come out to being 450. So consumer surplus with the tariff is 450. Uh, I forgot to finish doing this stuff though. Our suppliers uh, supplying 15, which means we are now importing. 15 units of the good. So imports go down. Our sellers get to sell more stuff at higher prices. Producer surplus is one half times 15 times, how big is that green triangle? It's $30 high. Uh, so this comes out to be 225. And there you have it. So what's this all look like? Our consumers, who were loving trade, now lose surplus because trade is being limited. Our producers, who were suffering under trade, now gain somewhat because the tariff has lessened their competition with the rest of the world. But there's more stuff here. There's more areas that we didn't look at. One thing I'm interested in is how much money does the government make with this deal? How much tax revenue? comes in well that one that's easy if we import 15 units of the good and there is a ten dollar tariff on the good 
then tax revenue is just 15 times 10 is $150. So the government brings in 150 bucks out of this deal. And I'm gonna shade that with some yellow. I guess for the last one I can shade all of these. Now our next question, what about those last two triangles, these black ones down here. Well, those are the deadweight loss, ever present whenever the government intervenes in a functioning market. So we need the areas of those. I could do this by comparing our total surplus with free trade, which was 900, and just subtracting all of those. So deadweight loss is 900 minus 450, minus 225, minus 150, equals 75. That does not look like a seven. Okay, or I could actually calculate the areas of those little black triangles. So just for the sake of argument, I'm gonna do that. The triangle on the left, one half times, let's see, it's five units across, and 10 units high is 25. The triangle on the right, one half, it's 10 units across, and $10 high is 50. Add them both up, is 75. Dead weight loss is 75. So you could calculate the total surplus way or you could actually calculate the area of those little triangles. It won't matter. As long as you do your math right, it's all the same thing. So, in recap, there is more surplus in the market with free trade than without trade. Uh, but there are winners and losers. If we're importing, our consumers win and our producers lose. So, you will often have the case, as with recent policies under the Trump administration, they'll put tariffs and they will restrict trade in certain ways. When they do that, it means that our consumer surplus will go down. And uh, consumers who were benefiting from free trade would rather not see it get restricted. But our producers, they do benefit from it. And that's sort of where it comes from. It's a redistribution effect. In addition to that redistribution, the government picks up a little bit of money, but it's inefficient. Your market will have fewer transactions and lost surplus if you engage in free trade or if you engage in trade protection. So before you do, make sure you have some idea of who's winning, who's losing, and how big these effects are uh, because obviously arguments can be made on behalf of the consumers, arguments can be made on behalf of producers, but do be aware that it does create losses in the market and there's less productivity and fewer transactions because of it. So I hope that was useful to you. If not, too bad, your time's been wasted anyway. Good luck, you guys.